The story of inheritance begins, like many things, with the ancient Greeks. Aristotle, fresh from inventing logic itself, noted that children often look like their parents. Aristotle decided that the man determined the form of the child, whilst the woman provided the material. He planted the seed, she provided the soil that fed it, and for hundreds of years, this was as far as people got. The first clues to what actually goes on inside women came in the 1600s. Two Dutch medics announced that women actually produced eggs, like birds. A few years later, another Dutchman, this time a fabric merchant, made a startling discovery by examining the contents of his trousers with a primitive microscope. Seamen seemed to be full of tiny creatures that thrashed around like a snake. He discovered sperm. Most people thought babies must start off as perfect miniatures inside either egg or sperm, but no one knew which. By the 1800s, the inheritance question took another giant leap forward, thanks to some farmers. Men like Robert Bakewell were a new breed, who saw sheep as machines for turning grass into money. So he bred his best males with his best females. The resulting super sheep suggested offspring were a mixture of their pairs. But naturally, it wasn't quite that simple. In Austria, a monk called Gregor Mendel had spent years carefully breeding pea plants, tall with short, yellow with green. His results suggested that instead of a simple blend, each offspring received one element for height or color from each of its parents, but that one could override the other. By 1909, Mendel's elements had been renamed genes. And just a year later, whilst breeding flies, Thomas Morgan showed these genes actually lived on tiny structures inside the cell, the chromosomes. The science of genetics had been born. Scientists delved deeper until Watson and Crick finally revealed the double helix of DNA. So, how does inheritance work? Put simply, we receive half our dad's chromosomes from the sperm and half of our mum's from the egg. On these chromosomes are genes, pieces of DNA containing the instructions to make our bodies. They're the basic units of inheritance and affect whether we, our children, and our children's children end up tall, short, blue-eyed, curly-haired, or bald. Well, those are the basics. To explain more, let me welcome our guest tonight, a world-round expert in genetics, also an author, a broadcaster, and a man who's furthered our knowledge of natural selection. He's currently Emeritus Professor of Genetics at University College London and one of the world's greatest experts in the love life of snails. Please welcome Professor Steve Jones. <laughs> Steve, uh, it's difficult to start on a subject as massive as this. Like, what we said it was going to be about sex. Does sex work, really? Does sex, is it efficient? <laughs> is it the best we could have done? It's, it's messy, but it works. I mean, I start my genetics course at University College London by saying I'm a geneticist, and my job is to make sex boring. <laughs> it's uh, an extremely inefficient mean, mechanism, because what it means is that women waste their time copying somebody else's genes. Now, why they should do that is probably the biggest mystery in biology. Why do women allow men to get away with it? Um, no idea. <laughs> I mean, it's a real mystery. Because we're so charming, Steve. Uh, 